Do you want to know how to transform a Craftsman's Veristat case into a unit that's rackable, that's plug and play? Stay tuned in this video and I'll show you how. All right, welcome back to the channel and thank you for joining me today. So we've got a great video today on the Craftsman cases. So this is really taking the Craftsman cases to the next level. In the other video, we showed you guys what you can do with the cases, how you can pack them and how versatile and how they help with your DJ setup. This time, we're gonna take it to the next level and show you how to integrate your microphone into one of these, similar to a rack case, and then integrate that into your rack. So you're definitely gonna to wanna to stick all the way through this video. I'm not just showing you what I did, but I'm showing you how I did it. So if you guys are thinking about getting the Craftman Veristat cases, or you already have them, this is definitely a video for you. So I built my Shure QLX D4 into a Craftman Veristat case. Now you might be wondering why I decided to do this. I wanted a faster setup for my mic, and as a DJ, anything that can be done to save time and money is absolutely priceless. Now I didn't want to fully rack mount this mic because that locks you into one system. So the way I did it allows me to still utilize my standard 19 inch rack mount. I can remove everything when needed. I tend to run and gun a lot. So there's gonna be occasions where I need to use this as a wireless receiver or a speaker or a ceremony mic or just for a different event. Now everything's been on back order due to the pandemic, so I wasn't able to get more than one of these units. So until I can get another one, this allows me to have maximum flexibility and protection for my mic, to maintain the reception, allows for a setup and breakdown in under a minute, allows me to go from location to location seamlessly, and there's zero loss of flexibility to stack with my other Craftsman cases. Before I could build out this case, I had to decide where I wanted everything to go. I had to figure out some location for the antennas, the power, and the XLR output. I decided to front mount the antennas so everything would be up front, and if I ever needed to sit the case up, there would be no potential for damaging the BNC connectors on the bottom. I decided the best location for the power supply would be on the rear of the unit using a pass-through, which would allow me to plug an extension cord in and feed wherever I need to, and also give me two outlets inside the case, one for the mic and for anything else that I need. Now, I'll try to remember to link everything that I use here in the description. I was able to save a lot of time in measuring because the gasket that was on the inlet, I was able to pull it off and actually use that as a template for where I need to drill. Now to drill a hole for my electrical outlet, I used a one and three quarter inch circle to cut a hole through the case. Now this was a little bit tight, which was intentional because you want everything to snug in as tight as possible so it's not loose and moving around. To widen the hole, I used my Dremel to bore it out to the exact size I needed. After my hole is drilled, I fed the wires through, snugged it in, and used number four 40 one inch screws to snug her on in and lock her down. Up next, I needed a location to drill my antennas. I landed on front and center, right above the latches. Now don't make the mistake that I made. I didn't look inside the case first, so I was right up against the plastic when drilling this into the case. To work around my mistake, I took my Dremel and sanded down the plastic on the inside of the case to get my washer and nut onto the antenna mount. The last part of drilling I had to figure out was the XLR output. I landed on putting this on the front of the case for a couple reasons. Number one, it would be easier to put this in the rack and to plug it in um, and just would be just less of a hassle. Number two, standing the case up. There was enough clearance, but I just wanted to be absolutely sure that the XLR port wasn't going to get damaged. The front of the case actually has this nice indent, which is gonna help protect the XLR from any damage. To lock down the XLR, I used number 440 half inch screws to keep everything nice and snug. After getting this installed, this was the last big step. After this was a matter of inserting the foam, connecting all the wires, testing out to make sure everything is working correctly. Now the foam I use here is cube foam. So this allows you to cut the foam to size and have your equipment recessed right into the foam. I chose not to do any cutting right away and I made sure to get a foam size that was just short of what I need to create a natural pocket right to the left where I could have my power wires and a little pocket to stash other things and plug other stuff into my extra outlet. I also chose not to lock down the antenna wires in case I need to pull the unit out. I wanted this to be as flexible as fluid as possible. And the way the antenna wires are, you can close the case naturally and have plenty of slack and they won't get caught up in the case. So this actually works out pretty well, not having to do much with those at all. 
Now my receiver, the goal for this is just to have it sit pretty much right in the middle and then the mic is just going to sit naturally to the right of it and I'll build a piece of foam that's going to go on the top cover that compresses everything down which will help prevent vibrations and provide maximum safety for my gear. I also don't want to forget to mention how light this is. I can literally lift this up with one finger and you still get all the protection you're going to get with a rack case. But a rack case is going to be a lot heavier and a lot bulkier. It's not going to be able to snap onto your other gear. So this is just going to be all around a lot more efficient for what I need. So here's a brief look at the interior wiring of the finished product. Here's the antennas, the power, and the XLR. This took about an hour of my time, but I had all the materials on hand. This is a fairly easy project and one that I think that anybody can do with some basic skills. So let's talk about how much this all costs. The electrical pass-through is about $20. The XLR pass-through, $16. The number four screws for both the electrical outlet and the XLR pass-through is about five bucks. The foam is about $20. The case is about $30, and the price of an electrical cord is gonna vary. So all in all, you're getting into nice protection, good layout, something that's efficient, will fit in your rack, and is custom geared to your needs for under $100. Multiply that times a rack case is gonna cost you upwards of hundreds of dollars depending on the case you get. And after you buy the rack case, you're still gonna have to invest on equipment to customize it to your needs. So literally pound for pound, you're saving a lot in weight here, you're saving a lot in money, and you're saving a lot in efficiency and time. This is truly priceless. From start to finish, it takes me about 35 seconds to get this case powered up and mission ready. So you saw me build this out and set it up. So how does it sound? And does it work? Let's check it out. Check, check, check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Check, check, check. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is awesome. This has hands down transformed my setup for ceremonies. If you guys want to make this even more portable, you can add a battery to it. If you invest in a Halo Bolt for about $100, you can Velcro that right to the top of the back of the case, turn that on, and then you have portable power for hours. So the mic can run on its own off battery power. Now I use my JBL Eon MK2 for my ceremonies. So all I need to do is grab my microphone, my Halo Bolt for battery power, my JBL and my cell phone, and I am all set to go. With this setup, I've cut the wires, increased portability, and more importantly, saved a ton of time. So this is how I set up my microphone in the Craftsman Vera Stack cases. I hope this has helped you and offered some alternatives to spending hundreds of dollars to get lesser results. Now thank you for watching and if you have taken anything away from this video, please do me a solid, don't be weird, subscribe, give me a like, give me a thumbs up, and make sure you ring that notification bell as I'm working hard to generate unique ideas that's going to help all of us DJs in our community. Well, that's all she wrote. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.